11.14 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, July 26, 2011. I am Valerie Reified, and I did not repeat this morning. So, the uh, debt ceiling negotiations are looking like... Well, I don't know what they're looking like, because... I know the default on the United States debt is going to be desperately, drastically bad in the short term. Um, the medium and long term, well, again, it would depend on the political implications. This is one of those weird things where it's just sort of like, I, I begin to wonder, it's like, well, how, how shitty can Western living standards get before, you know, people start saying, you know, maybe electing right-wing scumfucks isn't the best idea. I don't know. Um, I'm quite lost on that. But it's interesting because um, as the president continues to uh, offer to give away the store, three trillion plus, I believe we were talking about, over the next ten years in cuts, which is pretty significant considering that's a stimulus package every two and a half years. That's four stimulus packages, more or less, taken out of the economy. Um, as well as no increases in revenue, or no, no, wait, wait, promises that the Republicans would look at thinking about maybe sometime revenue increases. You know, doesn't matter because you're not going to see Medicare or Social Security until you're 67 or, I imagine, 70, and they're going to take out the COLA increases. I, I don't know. I mean, in Canada, you know, you can, you can suspend Parliament, you can uh, call your... Uh, you can slander your opponents, but heaven help you if you tried to touch the Canadian pension plan. Anyway, that aside, so there's been an increase in intensity of criticism of the president. Um, this, of course, is something that has been happening since 1797, you know. People who don't like what the president is doing, even people in the president's own party, will go after the president because he's the focal point of uh, what they will perceive to be the misgovernance of that party. I mean, if you can find if you can find me a presidential uh, candidate who wasn't either called corrupt, a philanderer, gay, or all three at the same time uh, through whisper, whisper campaigns, and we're talking from their uh, their co-partisans, I will frankly be shocked. So it is in that spirit that I made a little note on uh, Transgret's blog, um, really, really excellent blogger, um, when she had an article on Monday, July 25th, 2011, entitled, Respect this POTUS and FLOTUS like you've done the other 43 white ones. And I'm thinking, do we really want him treated that badly? I mean, it's true that from the right, there's been a lot of really loaded, disgusting rhetoric that I don't even want to think about repeating. But from the left, I don't know. I mean, you want to look. You want to look at what they did to Johnson um, for committing us to an open-ended war with, uh, with with no end in sight. And uh, meanwhile, being one of the best presidents on civil rights and and domestic policy ever. So here's someone. Here's someone with a mixed record. With an arguably, oh, he's done some really, really good things. Um, like, I have to say, the Civil Rights Act, much more of an achievement than appointing Amanda Simpson uh, to a mid-level White House position and eliminating the surgical requirement for passports. So those are really good things. Um, it just doesn't compare to the great society. The health care reform, of course, um, if you want to call it that, it's... I don't know, I guess it's the most progressive thing they could get through Congress. So, as I said, I mean, there's reasons that one could legitimately be really disappointed in this presidency, and at the same time, not ever go for one half second, gee, I wish Hillary Clinton had been in. Because I don't. Um, I really don't. Because the thing about Hillary Clinton would be, you know, Bill Clinton is the kind of guy who... You know the old expression, you know, you're shitting in my mouth and calling it a Sunday. Bill Clinton is the kind of guy who could get you excited about the fact that he was going to shit in your mouth in advance. You are going to love this Sunday. That kind of thing. Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, Hillary Clinton would have told you, 
Only serious people want this Sunday. You know, real opinion makers in Washington know that this Sunday is best for the American people. You know, she'd sell it. At least, at least this president has, you know, the good sense to apologize. Uh, I'm sorry about what I'm trying to do. I tried to talk with Speaker Boehner. And he just wasn't having it, so, um... Well, I, uh, I recommend stocking up on certs. I'm sorry, my... All of my impressions are have gone significantly downhill in the last few years. I mean, my Obama sounds kind of like Dukakis, maybe. I don't know. Dukakis if a very drunk Sarah Silverman was trying to do a Dukakis impression and not really remembering who Dukakis was. Anyway, that's, that, that's my point. It's, you can legitimately criticize this president like every other president before them. They don't get a free... When you're president of the United States, you do not get a free ride. Um, you will have every single person who even minutely disagrees with you hoping that this is your political graveyard, that you are considered by everyone around you the worst president in history now and forever. Um, though, again, it's going to be tough to beat Bush. I, I don't know. Perhaps President Supervillain might. But... The thing that really got me, so we had we had an article that had a little bit of an understandable grievance. You respect this POTUS and FLOTUS like you've done the other 43 white ones. That was on Monday, July 25th, 2011. Then on Tuesday, July 26th, 2011, uh, an article talking about how trans people in the LGBT movement have been uh, sold out by a lot of the cis, gays, and lesbians. And it's a pretty valid point, especially if you want to look at some of the terrible, terrible stuff that Barney Frank has said. I've referenced it before, usually when I mention how Rachel Maddow doesn't talk about these issues at all. Anyway, title of that one, Since When Did Criticism of Gay People Become Anti-Gay Hate? I'm imagining it was the exact same second in which criticism of the president became racism. Really, it's a disingenuous argument, and what bothers me more than that, what bothers me more than that is the kind of cognitive dissonance that has to be going on to put both of those articles with both of those headlines uh, out in the same day. Oh no, here's my particular favorite. Um, here's one line. If you're accusing Endablog of being anti-gay because Kat has been highly critical of the all-marriage, all-the-time slant of gay activism lately, you're tripping. And it's true. That's not a really legitimate uh, criticism of it. However, um, Kat's uh, penchant for referring to uh, to Joe Salmanese as Pee Wee Salmanese, referring to, um, I can't even name the activist, it, his name doesn't occur to me, as Joe Fudgepacker. Well, guess what? You know, you can kind of begin to see how some people might conflate some very angry rhetoric, some very, uh, some very heavy language-based rhetoric. And, I mean, I find it all the more ironic because, at least from what I remember reading, Kat's last partner was also a woman. Um, but I find... Uh, I made this point, I made this point, um, two videos ago. Not every insult that uses a loaded and powerful word is used because someone hates you for that. Usually they're just trying to be jerks. They're reaching for they're reaching for sand on the floor and trying to throw it into your eyes. It's not clean, it's not nice, it's not worthy of a civilized society. Um, but there it is. And sometimes, as in Kat's case, uh, and she does back it up and she does say, I mean, this is the kind of language that she uses in response to some really, really messed up stuff coming from self-same activists. Um, sometimes, there, sometimes criticism of someone is not hatred of their identity. Um, and I think we'd do an awful lot better if we could begin to realize that. I mean, you know, I have a problem with Deirdre McCloskey's economics. That doesn't make me a self-hating tranny. Anyway, I'll get into that uh, bit on Deirdre McCloskey's interpretation of Adam Smith some other time. But not today. Bye, folks.